Well, hello guys, and welcome back to the Wolf's How. Oh, this week we're going to be doing, as it is Yule, so good Yule to you all. Um, we are going to be talking about the Wild Hunt, which could be running now or later. It depends on what area you are looking at. But it definitely feels like the right season for the Wild Hunt. Um, what do you think of that, Morgan? Well, some say that um, the Wild Hunt is connected with the story of Santa Claus, so it seems like a right around the right time to talk about it. Yeah, and I, I think it's interesting how there are different versions of it in almost every book you pick up. Um, I had one book once that said that um, as Odin rode on the Wild Hunt, he would choose who would live and who would not. But they also said it was a um, good thing because he was gathering up lost souls. It wasn't originally, now this was just one book, it wasn't originally seen as this terrifying hunt. It was seen as a blessing because the god was riding out during the harshest part of the winter and looking for, you know, those who were going to pass to the other side or who already passed and were lost. Well, I can see how um, mythology would change it, especially with the... Um, a theory that like Christianity came in and changed the story, so it makes sense that they would try and make like something that could have been maybe originally peaceful into something that could have been terrifying. But that's just a theory. Uh, yes, a god theory, and, <laughs> and <laughs> I I think too as the um image of Odin has changed from the Yule Father, you know, the Yule Father who brings the toys and you leave out the hay for Slipnir and um, gives toys to the children. As we're, a lot of people change away from that Yule Father um, and towards a more militaristic Odin, like, say, Clad of War, I, I think you're seeing sometimes that tradition, you know, slip away now obviously neither of us is in a heathen community mm -hmm. but it doesn't feel like there's this um resurgence of showing odin's more um nurturing side with the yule father um i've seen exactly one christmas topper tree topper or yule tree topper um forgive the um former life bleed over but um I've seen exactly one Yule tree topper that looks like the All Father. That that was it. Only one person dared to do that, and then it was never made again. Apparently, I'm sure some of you have, and if you do have something like that, you can say, or maybe you have slept near or something on the tree. But to segue into that too, it's as you're coming into Yule, um, and you came from another tradition. I came from a Roman Catholic background. Same here. Um, it's kind of, at first, it's like being plunked into a gigantic candy store and you don't know what to pick up and what not to, because you don't know what you like. Like, never seen candy before, plunked down into a giant store, you would have no idea what you like. So, you pick up the Wild Hunt and you like it, like my first year I was really super, super into it. Then you kind of draw back, and then um, you kind of get muddled, I think, sometimes. Yeah, especially if you're, like, um, exploring different paths, exploring what you want to actually do. It could be relevant to you or not. Especially also if you're, like, if you're, like, starting off in the, like, with the Norse gods. Maybe you're not working with uh, Woden or... Um, um, some of the others that heavily, so you may not be doing as much research into that. Um, so it could be like less relevant or more relevant to you at the time, depending. Yeah, and I think too, it's it's problematic because you know, if you know Heathen Ray, you know you have to watch for certain people. Yes. So sometimes I think we let the bad actors take things mm -hmm. like the Wild Hunt from us. 
Or, you know, I think because, you know, we, none of us live in a bubble and we see all these Hollywood movies about the gods coming out and everything. And I think even though we know better, even us older pagans, we kind of get a little disappointed when we go out in the wild hunt. Oh, you're not technically supposed to, <laughs> according to Morgan, but, uh, you know, if you go out in the wild hunt, if you're an Odin's person, you're crazy and you go out in the wild hunt. It's enthralling, ecstatic experience like nothing you've ever experienced. And yet it's not that Hollywood glamour of literally being taken up by the wild hunt, which would probably involve substances we cannot recommend on this channel because YouTube is YouTube. Yeah. Also, it could be... Um... It could be, you know, other things as well, and it it's kind of one of those things where I think as, I'm not going to call myself a reconstructionist, but as we're making our own way, as we're making our own heathenry or paganism or whatever, it can be hard to look at that and know how to use it because we came from such a structured background where you were told this is how you do everything to have absolute freedom and just be handed something and be told do whatever you want with it um that can actually be a bit overwhelming because you want to do it the right way you were conditioned to yeah and the right way in christianity was like you have to do this it's like um it's kind of like i'm getting a weird analogy of like being handed a um primary school education and then you're in college and they just give you a baseline and kind of things you should look over and sort of a structure so it's kind of like you had this really rigid discipline and then you're just kind of given like well here's some ideas you can incorporate what do you want to take and so you have to like form your own opinions and like form your own structure right right um and i noticed that some people really bulk at the idea you know getting away from the wild hunt a little bit and getting into the Yule Father, I, some people seem to have a problem with Odin having this aspect that brings toys, that loves children, that cares about Slepnir, because obviously if you put the treats out for Slepnir, that's that's how you get the toys. Yeah. It's almost like, well, I feel like people can sometimes get stuck in different aspects, and we are so sometimes not i wouldn't say one-dimensional but sometimes we can get really fixated on an, an idea and so having a different perspective and trying to like see very complex aspects of a deity um could be a little bit sometimes challenging especially if social media is presenting only one side of them or one side of like this particular deity mm-hmm and Odin, obviously, those of you that work with him, you know how he is usually portrayed. And he's usually, he's overpowered, and he's heavily muscled, and he's wearing one of those Bulg Bulgarian um, horn helmets that never existed. And, you know, you take that, and some people run with that, because that's that's what they want, and more power to them. But um, you all know that have been longtime listeners, we had the year where... Odin went vegetarian, and then he was going to go vegan, and he was full in on this. So this must have been Oski, or this was an aspect we don't know about, or we've lost. Because, mm -hmm. you know, there's speculation that Odin's earliest form was actually something to do with vegetation. If you're going to go back to Germany and say that Wotan was the um, seed that Odin sprang from, then he was much more... Uh, connected to fertility. Agriculture? Yeah, agriculture back then than he is now. And we have the Odin stones that are these tall stones that have the holes in the middle that they feel that they pass the babies through for blessings or healing. And we've lost that. And we also have the Odin stones. You find any stone with a hole in it can be an Odin stone. Mm-hmm. And I think, too, we'd be remiss if we forgot that, you know, Freyr is also involved in Yule. And for a lot of Freyr's men and women, they're going to be doing the big 
Boris had ham and, you know, all the hammy goodness. And it's kind of, I think, hard for us, too, because centuries of another religion have been kind of layered on top of yeah. what these things are. And sometimes you have memories and you can't unsnarl them. Yeah. For example, um, I'm having a lot of trouble deconstructing uh, Christmas music from the season because it's played everywhere and like songs like Oh Holy Night and stuff like that are so like ingrained with the season and they're played everywhere so it's kind of I'm finding it high, kind of hard to disconnect somewhat. Yeah and I agree it's you know I'm not at that angry pagan stage anymore where you know you hear it and it's like nails on a chalkboard and you're going to go um, join some kind of group to have them ban Christmas music. But I definitely went through that stage where I really resented that, you know, um, you got up Christmas Day and you're hearing all these church bells and everything. Um, but eventually, you know, you have to kind of step back from that fight because you have to kind of deconstruct and unpack all that Christian baggage a lot of us still have. Like, I still have it. There are times that I hear Oh Holy Night, and it is a beautiful song, and I'm like, oh, so nice. And there are times I hear it, and I'm like, that's the birthday of Mithras. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> and, 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 you know, like the, the pagan song says, Jesus probably wasn't a Capricorn. Yeah, it's like that. So, um, sometimes, like, it can be impossible to get those things you know, especially if you grew up in a family with a heritage of stuff that is actually Yule inspired. Yeah. It it can sometimes be an impossible task to un undo that knot. Yeah. Especially like um the whole trees, Christmas tree, not Yule tree. Like you even did that earlier. Yeah, and I will always do it. I will say Christmas tree to the end of my days because that's just what I grew up saying. And you can't go into a store and say, do you have Yule trees? I mean, they would probably understand you. I think that's like one of my actual pet peeves is that if you, you know, if you type in Yule, a lot of people use Yule as synonymous for Christmas. Yeah. And I don't care yet. It's not quite what you're looking for when you're looking for a Yule themed Yule themed thing. Yeah. You're hoping to find like what like a pagan community or like a pagan like decoration of some sort. Yeah, and I, I think going into that too, I think in paganism there's this huge push at times um to go above and beyond having the holiday be as natural as possible and sometimes you've got economic limitations on that you can't go get the fresh tree or sometimes you know it's just not practical maybe you're living in the middle of a city and you haven't seen fresh fruit and you don't know how long you're allergic to the christmas tree yeah any any number of things and i i kind of think that it's as loki used to warn me about using altars as a placeholder for a relationship <laughs> I think sometimes that it's wonderful to have those things if you can afford it and do it. But it's kind of like there can be a sense in paganism, at least it was for me, of like, I have all the nature stuff, I'm dumb now. And then, like, I spent so much time getting all the nature stuff, like the yeah. tree and everything else. Then that was it. I was exhausted. And that was the end of Yule because there is no way I was going to be able to stay up a full night. Is that actually something you're supposed to do for you? Um, it's something you can. Some people do it. I don't know if that's bleed over from Wicca about spending the night with the mother goddess. Huh. As, you know, it's considered, like, in some forms of Wicca and paganism, like the mother goddess, you're basically staying up overnight as she's going to literally give birth to the sun god. Uh-huh. But, you know, it's not anything we've seen in our lore, so it's not something, you know, you are you have to do. Yeah. There's something else I want to ask. Um, Have you seen, like, the theory that, like, one of each day of Yule is dedicated to Eastern deity? Yeah, I've seen that, and, you know, I think that's one of the good things is that now pagans are making, taking the holidays and making them their own, because you can do everything 
or anything you want. Like your imagination's your only limit. Um, unless you're recon, and then you are kind of limited. But if if you're going from a paganism or a looser heathen or whatever mindset, you can do whatever you want with fuel. You could have started it December first. You could have started it in January, ran it all year if you wanted to. Um, really, no one can tell you how to do that. And I think it's actually a good thing to have a day for each god because, you know, there's mm -hmm. almost endless numbers of Norse gods. And you might be on good terms with them, um, as you guys heard in an earlier episode, you know, about my Yule list. Um, we're looking down the barrel of Yule right now, and it's getting pretty close. And I'm like, I got most of the gods actually on that impossibly long list. But there are a couple that, you know, maybe I don't know them well enough for present this year. And there are a couple that it's like the time is starting to tick down. I'm I'm running out of time and options to, to do the gifts this year. Yeah. So I guess it's like do you however you want to do. Yeah. And, you know, it, it do it in a way that's meaningful to you. Because what's meaningful to you and what's meaningful to me may be very different. I know yeah. when I was younger in my 20s doing all the spell work meant everything to me i mean for me personally i'm getting more into spell work but i'm kind of at i'm kind of also in a stage where i'm like me personally I'm like i there's been a lot that's gone on from the past few months so i'm like if i don't get to it great that's i'm kind of trying to also give a break because there's been a lot of transition. So I'm, I'm kind of like seeing it as like a period of rest as well. Yeah, and I think too, to be easy on yourself this time of year, like um, I went out last night and um, so we're recording it. It's the day after the full moon. I'm doing this full moon ritual, guys. And I start as this great pagan heathen priestess doing all the, you know, the grand stuff doing all the spell work I wanted to do. By the end of it, the Wiccan priestess came out and everything was blessing and love and light. Don't be hard on yourself if you find yourself doing that. I say that I no longer consider myself Wiccan, and yet there are times. Mm -hmm. There are times the <laughs> Wiccan high priestess comes out, we all love each other, and we're going to put on lights and play with her crystals, and all the gods are one, and mm, you know, you know that kind of <laughs> Wiccan thing where if it works, use it. And, you know, don't be mad at yourself if you're doing that. And also for our Christo Pagan listeners, don't be mad if you're doing a Jesus Yule hybrid. You don't have to please other people. You just have to please yourself and your gods. Yeah. Whatever you and whatever gods you want to work with during this time, do it. And because Yule is supposed to be a celebration about you and your family and the gods. So however that manifests for you, that's great. Yeah, and it's it's kind of like um, pagans seem to have a lot of times that we give thanks. It's definitely time to give thanks for all the abundance and blessings you've gotten through the year. Even if this has been a pretty lean year for you, you've gotten your blessings and you know, you have stuff to give thanks for. Even if you have to sit and ponder for a minute, you have stuff to be thankful for. And it's a celebration of the return of hope, I think. It's a mm -hmm. festival of light for so many people. Like, um, Diwali, we already had. You're going to have Hanukkah. You're going to have Christmas. You're going to have Yule. There's going to be so many other things you can do. Yeah, and I think that's an important thing um, to remember. It's okay to still do the other things, guys. Yeah. Um, there's that pagan period of guilt of like, oh, what if I go listen to a choir sing and it's Christian music? Or what if I like walk past the nativity and I smile? Like the gods are no, the gods aren't going to get you for that. I mean, there are those who just basically take all the pantheons and go, we're going to do it all. Yeah, like I do with International House of Awesome, even though, like, for the last month or so, Odin's been making at least my part Norse only. Not so much with me, but 
everybody has their own path. Yeah, they do. And I think that's important to remember, guys. We all have our own path and we all have only only so much we can do. So this you'll please enjoy yourselves. Even if all you do is go out and mm-hmm. salute the sun. Enjoy yourselves. Have a blessed one. We want to thank you guys for being with us this entire year. Do you have any closing thoughts? Um, we just want to thank you for the support. Thank you for welcoming me so much so well on to the channel. Thank you for supporting the channel throughout the whole year and And we will see you guys next time. Bye bye. Bye.